Hey world! Today I'm gonna talk about uni books. Um, because I said at the beginning of this semester, which was like two months ago, uh, that I have some books to read for uni that I won't talk about in the monthly web ups, even though I read them during those months. Um, but that I'd talk about all of them together now, at the end of this semester. So the first book I want to talk about is this, which looks really, really horrible. I have this annoying habit of peeling off like the foil of the books when when it's coming off. I'm just gonna peel it all off. All my books from school look like this. But even though you can't see the cover, this is Silas Mana by George Eliot. And this was for my literary stylistics course. Um, and sadly enough, we didn't actually talk that much about it. We just picked like little examples every now and then to show how some stylistic device can be used, but we didn't talk that much about it, which I found really, really sad because I actually really love this book. However, if everything goes to plan, I'm gonna have an entire seminar just on George Eliot next semester, which is wonderful. Um, because I think she's a great author. For those of you, um, just if you're confused why I'm saying she, uh, George Eliot is actually Mary Ann Evans, which in itself is quite a fascinating story why she's writing under the synonym George Eliot. Um, so I'm hopefully gonna learn more about her as an author and hopefully also gonna read more next semester. But yeah, I thought Silas Mana was a really lovely book. It was so sad. It was, oh, I cried so many times and it was just really, really devastating, but the writing style is so beautiful that it's like, it hurts, but you like it. And then we have these four books, which were all for my Gothic fiction course, which was quite interesting. I'm not that much into Gothic. I'm more like the everything's fluffy and fine person. I kind of got into the writing style. I kind of like this, this spooky atmosphere and this mysteriousness like the fact that supernatural can be a real thing in gothic. I think that's quite nice. Um, so yeah, the books we had to read were Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, du Maurier. Um, The Woman in Black by Susan Hill and The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. I didn't read all the books and the two books I didn't read were The Woman in Black and Rebecca. Um, simply because we have four books for one semester and this was a really really short semester. We had just two months this time, um, or like two months and a week, so it really wasn't much. And then three of the um, seminars also got just cancelled because of holidays or because the professor was sick. So I just didn't have the time. Maybe one day I'll read Rebecca because the few seminars we did have on it seemed quite interesting. I probably won't read The Woman in Black simply because I did this. <laughs> I got into blackout poetry and I just thought The Woman in Black was quite a fitting title. So yeah, I never read this book and then I defaced it. I know some people think it's horrible, but I actually really enjoy it and I wasn't gonna read this because this is the kind of gothic that is too scary for me. So if you have any thoughts on these two books, leave them in the comments down below. Enlighten me on what I've missed. Um, but I did read The Castle of Otranto and Frankenstein. The Castle of Otranto was really funny. <laughs> um, this is from, what is it, 1764 and it's said to be maybe one of the first gothic novels ever. And whilst I read it, I just realized how time changes because the things that are supposed to be scary in this and that were probably really, really scary and terrifying for the people who read this back then just seems so hilarious to me. It's just, it's just so funny um, how scared these people get and how, like, how insignificant the supernatural seems 
at least to me. I think her name is Isabella or Isabel, something like that. I thought she was a really well thought out character. I loved her character development. I loved her role in the book. So she was quite a cool character. And then last but definitely not least, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have this really gigantic edition um, because there's a lot of essays in this. And if you ever do have to read this for uni or for school, um, I would really recommend getting this one. It's the second Norton Critical Edition because the essays in the back basically cover everything you could ever talk about regarding Frankenstein. And actually this is also the book I picked for my charm paper this semester. So I'm gonna stylistically analyze why the monster in Frankenstein isn't actually a monster. Which I think is super interesting. The introduction and kind of the epilogue or something is written in letters by a completely different person who then tells Frankenstein's story. Um, and this different view on it, which I'm also gonna describe in my paper, um, which is actually quite complex in this story and a story and a story. Um, this different view on Frankenstein and the monster is also quite interesting for the reader, but also in like analytic terms. So yeah, this, I think this is a great book and I just, personally, I can just say that I heard so many things about Frankenstein and I've seen so many adaptations and there are so many like stereotypes that come when you think of monster that just derive from this, that started with this Frankenstein's monster. And it's such a part, huge part of like literary culture everywhere. And I've never read it. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was actually quite a beautiful story, if you can say that. Um, so yeah, I, I think this might actually be one of my favorite, favorite books I've ever read for school. I actually think it's quite interesting when you study literature, what is like considered important enough to read and to talk about, um, and what is considered like a huge part in our literary culture. So I'm always, quite excited for my reading list and I really really hope I get into that George Eliot uh, seminar next semester. So yeah, um, that's already it for my uni reads web up and I hope you always have a reason to smile and I shall see you next week. Goodbye!